Hi there, my name is Ulysses Buchanan and uh, I'm from the great state of Florida. Born and raised here all my life and <laughs> man, this is crazy uh, because ladies and gentlemen, I am a state legislator. I know, I know what you're saying. The boy who couldn't get into any college because of my 1.4 GPA is representing a legislative district. <laughs> it's incredible. Personally for me, I have always been interested in, uh, in a life of politics. You know, the glitz and glamour of wearing a suit every single day and uh, talking about issues that have really no impact on my life at all is something that really appealed to me. <laughs> but uh, well, let me talk about uh, who I represent as a legislator. See, I represent Florida's 54th legislative district called Hog Lake. Now, you might be asking, where is that? And uh, personally, I don't really know. Uh, I have a map right here that uh, says it's like in Florida. So hopefully uh, we can do some some fancy editing thing to, to show where Hog Lake is. That would very much be kind of you. My constituents are probably some of the most unique citizens in uh, probably the entire state. Uh, we all have strong beliefs and strong personalities in what our state laws should be, and we are not going to compromise with what we want. Now, uh, some people are going to look at my district and they're going to say, oh my God, there's every, they all think the same. No intellectual diversity at all. And uh, what I have to say to that is I represent a diverse coalition of uh, fish, mermaids, turtles, English teachers, um, Buddhists, communists, and the occasional Norwegian immigrant. Well, let me introduce you to my uh, legislative assistant, always hard at work, Maggie Hicks. You know, she's actually very smart. She took the SAT. <laughs> Bonafide genius right there, am I right? <laughs> Hi, I'm Maggie. Um, this is my first political internship. I was just talking to my poli sci professor about getting experience, and he said that there's lots of openings for legislative internships. Um, I definitely should have been more specific about where I wanted the internship. Well, we're here now in Tallahassee for my first legislative session, and I have my own personal appointment with the governor himself about some possible executive orders. So I'm a little bit nervous about both of those things, but I'm also excited. But firstly, I have some bills in my hand about what the people of Hog Lake have suggested for the state of Florida. So let's go through them just to give you an idea of what I do as a legislator. So uh, we're looking at legalizing marriage with sisters, not brothers. We're not heretics over here, okay? Um, 407B, no more traffic lights, because that's obviously an infringement on our God-given freedoms. Legalizing indentured servitude. Though I don't really see the point there since we have a thing called interns now. So, I don't know, it's not my cup of tea. And uh, making fishing and the purchase of fishing rods illegal because we have lost too many loved ones to this tragic practice. So, that's pretty much it. I'm gonna go there, state capital, I'm gonna fight for Hog Lake. waiting in the lobby because we have our own personal meeting with the governor of Florida himself, DeVoe L. Moore. And uh, my God, this is just such a crazy experience for me. Uh, so from what I hear about DeVoe is that he has quite a bit of credentials to himself. Apparently he was the manager of McDonald's before he went on his historic political run. And uh, this is just a truly humbling experience for someone like me. Oh my god, Mr. Mr. Governor! Welcome. Pleasure to meet you. <laughs> oh my god. Woo. Oh god, it's, it's, this is incredible. I've never met a governor before. Oh, all I gotta say is, meeting you in person like this, your picture does not do you justice. Thank you. You, you look good yourself too. Oh my now, god. Listen here, I got a flight to Honolulu. About oh, okay. Now, so let's make it quick, alright? Because this is business. Let's get down right, to let's it. Go. Mm -hmm. So, Mr. Buchanan, what is it that you have in store for me today? Uh, well, you see, Mr. Governor, I would like some executive orders. Though I don't really know how much I need to pay for each one. Wait, but, what? Oh, uh, okay. I know, I'm not sounding very democratic right now, but uh, here's the thing. 
Mr. Governor, we both know how ineffective the legislature is. I would have to go there and debate and argue to get my bills passed, and it just seems so excessive when I could just come to you, get some executive orders, pay you for your services, obviously, and then it's become law so much simpler. I'm sorry, but that is simply not how executive orders work, Mr. Buchanan. All right, Mr. Governor, I know your history as a, as a businessman, and your personal actions have inspired me to start my own McDonald's franchise. Although unsuccessful, um, I know you do adhere to the economic principle of I give you money and you give me a sandwich in return. That sandwich being executive orders, of course. So all I gotta ask is, let's hear out what the people of Hog Lake want from the state of Florida. All right, well, let's hear it out. Let's go ahead and tell me what you guys have proposed. Okay, beautiful. Well, Mr. Governor, firstly on the agenda, you know what indentured servitude is, right? What? So basically, Ulysses was kicked right out of the governor's office, uh, escorted away by a Tallahassee police officer, and now he's facing charges for bribing an elected official and corruption. I guess it's not that bad though, he can still attend the legislative session tomorrow. Alright, so uh, my meeting with the governor did not go as planned. Uh, like, I honestly don't even know what happened in there. Like, are we not capitalists anymore? Like, what happened to this country? It's like I'm living in the USSR. And now they're charging me with some fancy legal terms. Something like that. Called, uh, bribery and corruption. Like, what does that even mean? Alright, so, because I couldn't get any executive orders from the governor, I'm gonna have to convince the state legislature, the big majority, to vote for my bills. And it's gonna be a little bit difficult given the time constraints, but uh, the people of Hog Lake are counting on me. And uh, I gotta get the job done. So I gotta start networking right now. Let's do it. Damn government. So Ulysses has spent the entire day talking to different people in the Capitol building. Most of them weren't even legislators. There were some janitors, some protesters, and a couple of them were just lobbyists who were trying to add more laws onto him. So what Ulysses needs right now is a good speech to convince the state legislators to vote for his bill. Fortunately, I have some connections. Hi there, bit of a close up I know, but here's the thing. We are going to meet with a, uh, with a speech writer that Maggie knows from her poli sci class. And thank God for her because my networking skills did not make the cut. I got one legislator to uh, vote against my bill and now I'm part of like a protesting movement as well. Really, today is not my day. But thankfully, because of her, I am uh, very close to this man's address. And uh, it's not really much of a meeting. It's kind of more like we know where he lives and we're gonna go talk with him. You know, bit of a surprise, I know, but that's the way we do it in Hog Lake, uninvited. You're the speech writing guy, right? Yeah. Hey, what for you? Yeah, man, so here's the thing. I need the best speech ever crafted known to mankind because uh, I'm a legislator and uh, I need to convince the legislature to vote for my legislation. Oh, yeah? All right. Well, well can I see it real quick? Yeah, so here are my bills. Thanks. Uh, hold on. Hold on. What, what, what is this? That is the hope and joy of Hog Lake put into writing right there. So can you write me a speech? Give me an hour, dude. I'll, I'll figure it out. All right, incredible. Okay, so apparently we made it to the House Legislature and wow, this is like incredible. Uh, I'm surrounded by some true political powerhouses here and this is really a humbling experience for me. Oh God, um, that there is a legislator Tyrone from Miami. Ugh. Uh, apparently he represents something like 700,000 people. But um, my papa always said, it was the quality of people you represent 
not the quantity. Ulysses Buchanan, how you doing? Ty I'm all right, Tyrone, how about yourself? Well, you know, it's been busy lately, representing hundreds of thousands of people, big responsibility, but you wouldn't know anything about that. You represent the, like what, 200 people? Actually, Tyrone, it's, uh, it's 150, so get your numbers right, smart guy. Okay, so Ulysses will never tell you this, but the passive aggressiveness between those two actually goes back to their old high school days. Apparently, Tyrone wasn't born in Miami, he's actually from Hog Lake. So the two of them went to the same high school together, and they both ran for class president. Tyrone ended up beating Ulysses pretty badly, and then he went to the University of Miami and majored in political science. Then he went on to uh, intern for the mayor and multiple senators, so now he's kind of considered this political big shot. And rightly so. Hey Ulysses, what type of legislation do you have in store for us today? Well, you see there, Tyrone, that's a surprise. You just have to wait and see, because the people of Hog Lake have uh, something good in store for the state of Florida. Ah, the good people of Hog Lake. The good people who also wanted indentured service. Am I correct? Yeah, what of it? Isn't indentured service just a fancy word for slaves? No, no, no. See, I don't know why you would think that, Tyron. I think that's kind of ignorant of you. Right. Well, uh, what, uh, what bills are you proposing today, Big Shot? I'm glad you asked. People of Miami are asking for more money to be invested into the state infrastructure, you know, roads and highways to make traffic more efficient since we get such an influx of people. That's also the very same reason why we're proposing a tax cut across the board, which should foster business, innovation, and employment. Those actually all sound like really good ideas. I think they would actually really help the state of Florida. So I think- Like hell I'll let you do that, Tyrone. You think you just come in here with your big city plans and your big city ideas and it's like, oh my God, I'm gonna change the entire state. No, you know why? You know why that won't happen? It's because there are people who live outside your urban sprawls, there are people with actual opinions, actual voices that you forgot, and they will never vote for your bill. Is that so? Uh-huh. Thank you, good people of the Senate, for voting for my bill. Now, I know we had some dissenters earlier think that we weren't going to make it, but uh, clearly they were wrong. You know, I know these people here know what's good for the people of the country, and we have some great representatives here. In fact, I'd like to introduce one. Up next on the agenda is the representative from Hog Lake, Ulysses Buchanan. Oh. Ladies and gentlemen of the Florida House of Legislature, I have come here today as a representative from the small town of Hog Lake. I've, I've come here today to propose four bills. Uh, it was five. Unfortunately, one needed to be scratched at the last second. But the bills I am proposing today are, number one, 407A, legalizing marriage to sisters. Doesn't matter which one, we're open-minded, we're open-minded to that. Uh, number two, 407B, the illegalization of fishing and the purchase of fishing rods. Many of my residents in Hog Lake have been brutally murdered by this tool and practice, and we don't want to see it anymore. Number three, 407C, getting rid of traffic lights. Because let's be honest, the government already has too much control over our lives already. Am I right, boys? Yeah, I see you there. Mm -hmm. And number four, uh, this one I'm proposing personally. 407D, I want the state of Florida to put economic incentives for fostering businesses and corporations to move into small town areas. Uh, I feel like there's just too many people here who grow up in Hog Lake that move away. So anybody that has a future doesn't see their future in Hog Lake. And maybe with businesses and attractions, that could possibly change. Yes, I know. I see it on all your faces. The bills that I propose today are extremely unrealistic. And, but this is what my constituents want for the state of Florida. They are just as much citizens as any of you, as just as much as the richest man in Miami, and just as much as the smartest woman in Tampa. They may not be the brightest, they, they may not be the most important people in the grand scheme of things, but they should just have as much of a voice as anybody who lives under the United States flag. <laughs> Damn, this is a good speech. 
Um, I mean, I should be damned if my constituents don't have a voice in our country's political process. Well, uh, it wasn't a complete failure in there. I got one of my bills passed, 407D, economic incentives for businesses and corporations to move into small town areas in Florida. So hopefully that'll do some good for Hog Lake, we'll see. But uh, it is quite unfortunate that I didn't get my other bills passed. But uh, that's just democracy, you know? It's the way things are. And it, it, it just isn't about my district that for when it comes to state laws. Every other area in Florida, no matter how big or small, has a say as well. And uh, what they ended up saying was that they didn't want my bills passed. But uh, what I'm trying to say here is, I just, as a legislator, I don't want my constituents' voices to be drowned out by the oceans around us. You know what I'm saying? Somewhat decent metaphor right there. Uh, but in the end, uh, I did the job that I came here to do, and I'm proud of it. You proud of me, Maggie? Sure. Awesome.